Do your spiel again. Here we go. Here we go, the Zimbabwe and Tony Johnson, top golfer, now golf commentator, bird and wildlife enthusiast, takes great photos, well, professional wins, what a professional record, 25 professional wins worldwide, played eight Alfred Dunhill Cups, eight World Cups, boom, let's have it. Tony, here you go, mate, 11 questions coming straight out, you're thick and fast. What brands of golf clubs did you play, woods and irons? Uh, pro career, I started off in the very early days with uh, some slazengers. Yeah. Uh, and they were actually the Bobby Locks lozenges, which were the store-bought model. They were, they were real cheapies, but I loved them. I then went to uh, Mizuno uh, and used their store-bought model. They were called Mizuno Astrons. And honestly, if they were a blind date, you would have walked in the door and left. They were so ugly. Um, you know, they, were, they had a huge offset, uh, massive heads. This neon green writing on them, but I loved them. After that, I went to Ping, and then at the end of my career, I used uh, Taylor Maiden Callaway. Awesome, awesome. Question two What bird or animal are you most like and why? Uh, it has to be the leopard all day long. Leopards uh, are just special. They're hard to see, they're quite rare uh, out in the Bundu. Well, they're probably not that rare, they're just hard to see, and I can sit and watch a leopard in a tree all day long. They're always interesting to watch, spectacularly beautiful. And the other one I would always go for is elephants. Elephants at a water hole. That is one of the hardest things to be in the bush, watching them having fun bathing and playing as a herd. Well, mate, awesome. Can't beat the Bundu. Now, third question. Favourite British food dish and favourite Zimbabwe food dish? Uh, favourite British food's got to be roast. Yeah? Yeah, roast beef, Yorkshire pud. Um, I mean, when it comes to British cuisine, actually, there are not that many to choose from. Eh? No. Uh, we've stolen all, all the foreign cuisine from everywhere, the Chinese and the Indians and the this and the Italians. Um, yeah, but a, a good roast, roast beef is a wonderful thing. Um, Zimbabwean foods, we've got even less national foods, uh, fewer. Um, biltong, which is a South African food, but I mean, it's one of my favorite foods. Dried meat, oh man, biltong, oh, with, with a cream soda. Oh, drink. you and your cream sodas, my goodness. I got, I got six waiting for you, I found in a <laughs> South African shop. Don't you worry about Good it. Man. I've got you covered when you get Good back. Man. Just by the way, everyone, he's off to the Bundu. He's got eight, uh, eight days on his own in the Bundu. Can't wait in June. <laughs> Lucky boy. Now, question four. First car and dream car. I know you've got one good one. I know that. First car was a Datsun 120Y. Because we had sanctions in um, Rhodesia, as it was then. And the only cars you could get were... Datsun and Peugeot because uh, you know they, they just couldn't import any other things but a uh, little Datsun 120Y which I loved had the odd prang in it mind you because I tended to drive like a bit of a <laughs> bit of a clown uh, dream car I've sort of got uh, my dream cars I've got a Morgan plus 8 and a BMW 1M which is quite a rare beast uh, I love both of them but if I had to if I had to choose the ultimate car for me, it would be an Aston Martin Super Leggera, which I think is the most beautiful car ever built. Well, I've never seen that car, but <laughs> I, I'm now going to go online and have a look at that. That sounds unbelievable, by the way. Right, question five. What would your superpower be? <laughs> superpower? Eat as much dessert as you can. <laughs> as much dessert as I can and the ability to shut up when I'm right and my wife insists I'm wrong. Now, if I had one superpower, it would be flight. Flight? Flight, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I suppose everybody has the, dr the dreams where, you know, you sort of levitate and off you go. It's a beautiful feeling. And then I wake up and I'm five stone overweight and crushing the bed again. It's, is, uh, that, is that something to do with loving birds as well? No, I've had that. For, I've, always, I've always thought from a young age that would be a magnificent thing to do. Yeah. Or teleportation, you know, where you just go, oh. blink. Well, and we, you and I would be in the Kruger Park for the next couple of oh, hours. Oh, mate, you better believe it. <laughs> Right, question six. Strangest thing, things you have seen on a golf course? <laughs> oh, that's a long list, Morgan. <laughs> I know, but you've got to pick one that comes to mind. Just one or whatever. You go for it. Strangest strangest or funniest? Well, strangest or funniest. It could be yeah, One of the anything, funniest mate. things I ever saw was uh, Mark Ferry. Uh, because when we played together, I would lose the head. And he, uh, every time I looked up, he was behind his bag. And all I could see was his shoulder sticking out, going like this, laughing his head off. <laughs> And we played in uh, Morocco in Agadir the one year, and the one par three, um, he was in the left-hand green side bunker, uh, thinned it over the back of the green, and his bag was pointed towards the bunker, and he walked up to it, and he absolutely hoofed the base of the bag. 
and all 13 clubs that were still in there just shot out the bag into the bunker and it was like pickup sticks all 13 just went woof and he and i mean i just couldn't contain myself and, and he looked up and i was behind my bag and it, uh, to this day that was one of the funniest things but you know when you've had a long career there's so many funny and interesting and strange things that you see it's very hard to pick one yeah i could imagine mate i got bolo too but <laughs> anyway here we go question seven ultimate sandwich ultimate sandwich um i like it when we have a roast beef and there's a bit of leftover and my my wife makes roast beef sandwiches with sliced roast potatoes on a bit of chutney i'm your man <laughs> ultimate cake now, how can you ask her? Well, I have to. I mean, Scott's not put that one down, but I know you love your cake. There's so many ultimate cakes. Coffee and walnut. Coffee, coffee and walnut and... cake would be my, my cake of choice. Yeah. Nice. Coffee and walnut. There you have it. Right. Question eight. Best players of your time? I mean, I sort of overlapped the end of my career with the, the beginning of Tigers. You know, we know Jack is the greatest of all time in terms of um, major records, but I think T Tiger's the, the best player that ever lived. I mm -hmm. played with him once and it was something to behold. We played in the World Cup with him in Argentina and I was just utterly gobsmacked with how this guy played the game. And the only other person I ever felt like that was um, Seve, watching Seve with his short game. It was just mind-bogglingly brilliant. But Tiger, yeah, Tiger's the Tiger's the best golfer that's ever lived. Might not have Jack's record, but definitely the best player. Yeah, echo that, mate, echo that. Favourite golf course? Um, That's a really tough one. Mm, I know. You know. I think there's different types of course. Lynx courses, St Andrews. What did you prefer? Uh, I think Lynx golf was the ultimate golf, but I loved the Bushveld courses out in Southern Africa. Um, and the the best would have to be Leopard Creek. I know how much you love oh. Leopard Creek. I mean, it's just, you know, if there was a golf course you would play every day for the rest of your life, uh, it would be Leopard Creek. It's got the wildlife, it's got the birds, it's got a, a fabulous golf course, it's got the condition. Yeah, Leopard Creek, probably. Yeah, I'm with you on that, man, mate. Now, question 10, coming to the end. Favourite tipple? I think you said it already. Cream soda, I'm a teetotaler. I have no resistance to alcohol. Uh, you wouldn't even, I mean, you know I am like that, but not why, but I, I think I'm allergic to alcohol. I have one beer um, and I fall over and then I'm sick for three days. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just stick to cream soda. There you go, cream soda. I knew it would be. <laughs> now, question 11, two more to go. Favourite persimmon brands? Uh, McGregor, all day long. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I collected McGregor's, used the old McGregor's. I had um, Iomatics, I had Keyholes, I had Tony Penners, and they were just the most the most beautiful golf clubs ever made, I think, those old McGregor drivers. You know, you had the Tony Penners and Woods Brothers in America, but basically they were all trying to emulate the beauty of McGregor's. And I've got about 40 at home in my loft at home. Every now and then I go up there and I just have a look at them and I think, and I think modern clubs are going more towards that shape. I think the heads are tending to get slightly smaller, slightly more curvaceous and beautiful. But McGregor's were in a league of their own. What was the feel like off the face with a McGregor? Oh, it was magnificent. It felt was like it? a marshmallow coming off putty. Really? Oh, it was nice. just, you know, with the old Bellata ball, it had that beautiful soft feeling. You know, with a modern ball, you can get it at the, at the middle of the club or slightly toe your heel, and generally it feels the same. But um, with a Bellata and McGregor's, I mean, the, the sweet spot was as big as your little fingernail. And when you got it out of there, oh, was just the best feeling. It would bring you back time and time again. One of those around would bring you back. Oh, I love it. Right, last question. Here we go. How much chocolate can you eat in one night? How much can you provide? <laughs> <laughs> How many bites did you have the, no the other night? Oh, it was disastrous. Can't say it. Karen um, will be listening well, to this we arrived, probably. <laughs> we arrived in Catalonia. I went to the supermarket on Tuesday. Yeah. I bought two bars and I thought, okay, I'll just have a square a day. Those will last me, you know, till the end of the week. Well, I went up after dinner on Tuesday night, started watching a movie, and I thought, I better have my square of chocolate. Well, within probably 40 minutes, both bars were residing in this rotund belly. <laughs> I mean, I can just eat chocolate. You know, the, the huge bars of Cadbury's. Give me one of those and a glass of milk. Done and dusted, half an hour. Well, that is done and dusted. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. You're a legend, mate. My pleasure. Over and out. Cheers, buddy. <laughs>